Hello, and welcome to the next episode of the Live Your Spa Life Show. Spa life is a lifestyle that accepts that accomplishment and harmony coexist. The spa and spa life, the SPA, is for seek power always, that power within you to do your bigger work here in the world. I am really excited to introduce today my special guest, Marusha Murphy. She is a bringer together of incredible people, a serial entrepreneur, mom and wife. She is the creator of Perky Perky Coffee, a coffee company aimed at inviting women to step into their power from the moment they wake up. She also owns a marketing consulting practice with her husband, Dennis, to support their clients in learning how to create engaged and profitable audiences. You can check out the coffee company at perkyperky.com or check out her most recent course on inviting you to create your own profitable audience at profitableaudiences.com. Marusha, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me here to, today, Diane. So this is so exciting what you're up to and just looking at how we're, we're shifting things in the world. Things are a little bit different here in, in the pandemic and how we're, we're looking. How are you shifting uh, how you're doing life and business? Mm. Gosh, there's so many things that are showing up <laughs> in that question for me. Um, you know, for me, life looks different in a variety of different ways. Number one, we have three daughters, uh, ages 11, seven, and five. So I went from having an awesome support team of uh, nannies, babysitters, um, a housekeeper, to learning how to work full time and teach my children virtually. Um, and figure out how to do all the things that I really leaned on support for. So it has shifted a lot, um, but honestly, at the same time, it has given us permission to show up in our authenticity of meeting each other, right? And I think that has been such a, yeah, it's been such a gift. Um, it's been a really hard gift to learn, and it's been a gift, you know? Um, and so I'm, I'm very <laughs> grateful for that. <laughs> I'm learning how to be grateful for it. <laughs> I'm getting so much feedback with that because people are, are feeling that sense of gratitude of, you know, how many times have people said, Hey, I wish I had more time. I wish I could be more with my family. And then poof, yeah. here it is. Uh, yeah. But just maneuvering the, the different ways of, of being and doing that. I know for like my daughter and grandkids that you know, you've got like three different kids on zoom doing their yeah. homework and then you're doing yeah. your work. And so it's a, it's an interesting dance to be able to do that. Um, so how are some of the ways that you have shifted, um, you know, some of your practices, some of your rituals, yeah. things that you do to get yourself grounded, um, to be able to, to focus on what you need to. Yeah, that's a great question. You know, I think for me, it has been, uh, you know, and I, I'm very much a fan of going with the flow. So for me, when everything first came on, it felt like it came on us where I really did feel like, oh my gosh, I'm the victim here, you know, which is not a place where I like to live very often. Right. But I found myself in that same, in that mindset of like, oh my gosh, I can't do this. There's no way I'm going to be able to do this. And I, and in catching myself in those thoughts, I started to have to give myself grace because I've realized this is an unprecedented time for not just me, for literally our whole world. And so being that six or 7 billion people are literally experiencing their version of, we have no idea what this is. I had to recognize that it's okay to feel unsettled. That was a huge part of this because I think for me, when I fight against that, like, oh, but this isn't the way life used to be, or, oh, but I'm supposed to live in this way, or, oh, but my business is run this way. There's no other way. Then I stop myself from being creative enough to think through what else is possible. So creating that recognition for myself was absolutely critical to being able to function in this new way, right? It was right. a surrender. It was a surrender, <laughs> complete surrender of self into what, what, else, what else can be if I gave myself permission to see another possibility. Oh, that is, that is so great. I mean, that is such a great yeah. sign of a leader who you can kind of stop and go, okay, the tide has shifted, right? I mean, yeah. you want to stay ahead of the curve of, of what's happening in the world. And yeah. to, when you ha allow yourself to be in that flow, you are able to see kind of the bigger picture and see more right. possibilities, which allows you to make those shifts um, that you need to make. And yeah. um, speaking of shifts, you know, you speak about, uh, 
speaking as being a superpower of yours. And I'd love to know how has that changed for you? Are you doing more online speaking? Um, yeah. What does that look like? And um, how is speaking a superpower for you? Yeah, I love speaking. To me, speaking is a, an opportunity for us to storytell and create connection between ourselves and others in the world. Um, so for me, being that that is a superpower, yeah, I've just, I've just been like, okay, well, how can, what are fun ways to make this happen? So actually, I've done it in a couple of fun ways. So I've been doing online, a lot of online speaking for, uh, for quite some time, for years now. So just really integrated that even more. Um, last week, I had like three speaking engagements online where I was selling programs and products that way. Um, and this week, I'll have a few more. And we're here on, you know, doing our podcast together. So really inviting more of these opportunities in has been definitely a lot of fun. But then I've also said, okay, well, what have I wanted to do using this superpower in unique ways? So for example, in Perky Perky, I actually decided, you know what, we're all home. And for a lot of my audience with, the, with Perky Perky, because it's all about inviting women to step into their power, a lot of us are women entrepreneurs who also have children, right? And we're trying to figure out how the heck to do it all. So I, I decided, you know what, if I, if I was on that, on that, on um, on their side, right? Watching in and connect, wanting to connect with somebody that um, says that I want to invite her to step into her power. What can I do to help them do that? So I actually created this little show. Uh, it's a little Facebook show that I've been putting together for my Facebook group. I have a Facebook group called um, hashtag around the cup. And in that group we do on um, every Wednesday night there at my community joins me in my bathtub <laughs> For this thing called whining, it. yeah, for one, this thing called whining down Wednesdays, and I literally have a bottle of wine that I wanted to try, um, and I've ha I have my community, and sometimes we'll play a game like never have I ever, or sometimes we'll just talk and we'll laugh together. Sometimes we'll talk about gratitude. You know, we've had a variety of different things that we've been doing since the beginning of uh, all of us staying home, and so that's been a lot of fun to use speaking in that way, right? And and then, and so what it has been, what I've recognized in this is how can I meet my, my community where they're at? If we can invite ourselves to use not just our superpowers, sorry, something in my eye, ooh, um, but uh, use our superpowers in a way to um, not just support us in our dreams and, and things like that, which is obviously super important, but also to use our superpowers to be creative and get out of our own boxes to be able to use, and use those gifts in fun ways. Not only does it make it more fun for us, right? Because we're challenging ourselves, but it also might just hit your community in a fun way, you know, like really impact them in a fun way. And that's what our, my community has, has said. They're like, please, let's keep doing this even after coronavirus, like <laughs> even after, because this is our reality and you bring light to it. Yeah, I love it. Um, okay, I can no longer hear you. I'm not sure what changed with the audio. Carrie, are you nearby? Hmm, not sure what happened there. Hmm. Oh, wait, speak can now. Can you hear me again? I can now. Okay, oh, That's weird. so weird. Oh. Hey, also at some point, I don't know if your earring is hitting your- Is um, it? Because it, it kept kind of clicking. Okay. Fortunately. I'm was, sorry. Yeah, I'm hearing that click, click, click. <laughs> Actually, oh, so that was a good pause for us to have, but I don't know why I lost the, the audio for a second, but I'll let them know at this time to check that. Okay. Um, so, you know, we lost audio for a second and also her earrings were clicking. So it was a good time to stop and have that shift anyway. So, um, just pick up where you left off. Okay. And, and what we're going to do is we're, we're going to snap your fingers three times. Okay. So we know that that's where we're starting again. Okay. Here we go. All okay. Right. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, uh, I love that you are spending time. Oh, wait, hang on. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. He's setting the audio again. Okay. I love that you're spending time in your bathtub connecting with your community because, you know, we talk about social distancing, but we don't want to lose social connection. And I think that it's great to have new and creative ways to connect with people who are feeling more isolated than ever. And I'm sure that they really appreciate having um, you have some of those insights and be able to connect with them. And I know one of the rituals that, 
that you utilize to connect with yourself is journaling. And what have you noticed any patterns in what's coming up for you uh, of how things have shifted? Mm. I think I have given myself permission to go into the depths of my feelings, right? So what I'm finding, I'm, I, I pride myself on the fact that I am, a lot of my friends call me Poppy from Trolls. If you've ever seen that, that movie, if you have kids, you would know that like, Poppy is that character in Trolls. It's like, oh my gosh, like always alive and always happy and always quirky. And, and, and quite honestly, Diane, like when someone pointed that out, I was like, yeah, she's kind of like my spirit animal. Like <laughs> I, I completely related to that. Like I completely relate to being the happy go lucky one, the one that charges forward and makes things happen. And every day is an amazing day. And I found myself, I have a few mentors as well who said, who've been saying to me for the last year, like, allow yourself to go deeper with yourself, allow yourself to feel all the things. And I'm like, yeah, okay, great. Yeah, good. Nice. Like that. Mm. And then push that away. Right? Like, no, no, no. I don't want to feel it. I don't want to feel it. And this has been such a gift in that sense. In the sense of, I mean, the first, quite honestly, the first two weeks I found myself doing this, I found myself going into help mode, right? I ended up literally, cause I, cause my first company was a virtual event management company, which I sold in 2015. So that company, I've, I literally built over a uh, thousand digital products and over 60 summits, virtual summits with my clients back then. Right. I know how, and, and since then I've used the, that knowledge base to continue to expand and create experiences online for myself and my clients right? In our marketing agency. And so you know, for me, it's been like, well, I have to go into helping mode. There's so many people out there that have no idea how to use the internet for their businesses like that. So I literally went into, and I created like three master classes within a week and a half. Three, you know, like I just poured myself out to, but to a point where it was so unhealthy, right? Cause I wasn't taking care of the fact that I was grieving my old life you know, my support system. I was grieving the fact that all of a sudden it was all taken away. I was grieving the fact that, oh my gosh, our whole world is grieving and I feel all that grief, right? But I was trying to be the helper, the, the go out there and going to be the hero for the world kind of deal. That was a huge eye opener for me that, wait, that's uh, what not- a, What a great awareness for you to be able to, to see that, you know, as when, especially when everyone outwardly sees, you know, all the, the perky things that are happening. I can see how, you know, we, we look here about what things are disempowering us. And when we don't take care of ourselves and we don't listen to that part, you know, it, I feel like it takes a little bit away from ourselves and who we're being. And I love that you gave yourself that time because did you find that in, um, what did you experience from having that time that led you to then feel more empowered? Yeah. So what happened actually, my body literally shut down. Like it literally, like after I did wow. those, like, my, my body was like, and you're going to sleep now for 12 hours. And I was like, no, this is not possible. Like I have to feed the children. <laughs> like I have, to, I have, I have to, even though I have a partner who's as capable as I am to take care of our kids. And he does, he's an incredible partner. At the same time, it was one of those things where I was like, no, 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 but I, ha I have to be the one who does all the things. And it was literally as a, sh it was like my body said, no, 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 my love, you take care of you. You're going through this. You, if you want to empower others, you have got to empower yourself right now by taking care of you. Go within for a minute. And that was a, that was a really big lesson because, and I, and I did another round of this, by the way, because I couldn't figure it out the first time. <laughs> That's funny how those things happen. And I mean, I'd love for our listeners right now to take a moment and, you know, because maybe you've got kids home or you're shifting the way you're doing work, you know, where are you recognizing this in your own life where you're, you're over giving, which is a great thing to do to support other people people, but are you doing it at the expense of yourself, mm -hmm. which ultimately will burn yourself out and you have to sleep for 15 hours or you may get ill, right? And one of the things that we want to be doing is doing the things that fortify our immune system, that take care of us so that we have that longevity. So I, I so appreciate, Marisha, you, you sharing that, that journey and that aspect of it because it's, it's so important. For, yeah. for people to, to look at how they are operating in what's being referred to as the new normal. Yeah. Um, what do you feel that, what's something that you're experiencing now with the, the shifts and changes that you will continue to implement when things, quote, 
go back to a, a different, you know, it's probably never going to go back to the way we, we saw it before, but in like the, the new way of being, what things are you taking with you? That's a great question. I honestly, in having this great, you know, as, as we call it the new normal, I'm also looking at it as the great pause, this opportunity for us to just pause for a minute. And it, in the slowing down, while I've been busier than ever, we've had more clients come in than ever because they're trying to understand how to do this new world. Um, I'm also recognizing that the pause is as important as the go. Yes. And, and hitting my pause button for myself has allowed me to be more present with my kids, giving myself permission in the evenings to just play full out with them. And then during the day when I'm, te- when I'm there with my five-year-old specifically, because she's the one who's having the hardest time with going virtual, you know, just helping her be slower with her, be slower with me and be tender with my, myself. And I think that's what I'm taking into this, whatever our new next phase will be, is what mm-hmm. can I do to continue to create this? It's actually even given me opportunity to, because I've been in some restructure because of this, right? I've been recognizing I want to restructure my business so that I'm only working 25 hours a week and able to create a company, create the company in the ways in which I love the most, right? right. And so that yeah. has been a beautiful thing. Whereas in the past, it's been like, no, 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 I'm supposed to build it this way because everybody's building their companies like this. No, 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 no. Right. That's somebody <laughs> else's, that's somebody else, that's for somebody else. That's not necessary for me. And it's not necessary for any of us who are listening or watching right now, you know, like it's not for it for them. Um, right. so just learning how to like go within into my great, my own great pause and, and then bring, bring out what's necessary to be fully alive in the work that I do both as a mother and as a partner and as a, um, a member of our community and, and an entrepreneur who loves to serve women, uh, to, to be more impactful in the world. Yes. I, I love this title of the great pause because that does allow you to, to stop and look at how have I been living my life. And I, you know, I believe that a lot of people have been focusing in only one or two areas of their life at the mm. expense of, of, of other areas, you know, and not purposely, but just yeah. that was just business as normal. And to look and go, how do I want to spend time with my family? How can I take care of myself? How can I be more efficient so that I'm not working 80 hours a week that, you know, 20 to 30, I get just, you know, the things done that need to be done and to really look at, at what is important. Um, And one of the things I love to ask um, my guests here on the show is, especially now that we are spending more time in our home, is that we have a different experience in our bedroom or our kitchen or office. Mm. And with that in mind, what is your favorite room in your home and why? Oh, that's a great question. Um, you know, my favorite room, and it's been this way since before, um, but it is, I, I'm, re- I'm like really enjoying it now. It is my back porch. Um, mm. It's my favorite space because when I go out there, I have a, a cute little um, coffee table set out there and it's just cozy. It's bright colors, which is more my style. And, um, and, and it overlooks the pool, which overlooks the lake that we live on. And it's just peace to me. That's mm. what peace feels like. Um, and so I go out there with my, my morning cup of coffee, typically with my journal. And I just, I close the, (laughs) close the door to the rest of the world, (laughs) you know, to the rest of my world, my kids and my husband and my, my two dogs. And, and I just, just, I'm there by myself and they know my, my family knows when that door is closed, do not bother mom. Like she is off limits. And it is, it's one of those boundaries I've, I've given myself to be in that space, but I'm relishing it now more than ever, Diane. <laughs> like, it is definitely <laughs> sacred for me to be out there. I love this. I mean, one of the things I love about this is that uh, it always gives the, the audience a, a way to think about, okay, what is their favorite space? And yeah. especially since there's a lot more shared space now about, you know, I, I've, I've talked to some of my clients about, hey, you know, call a, a closet yours, like whatever yes. it is that you need yes. to make your own space, <laughs> to, like take some extra deep breaths to have a moment to think to yourself, you know, yeah. to really have that happen. I think it's so important uh, just to claim some of that time and to be able to just to shift the way we're doing things and doing it differently. Um, and yes. so speaking of, of how we do things, I would love to just kind of go back to, because I know people are going to ask about 
um, what was the inspiration around the Perky Coffee and how did that, uh, you know, take off? Sure. Yeah. So that actually, so I started Perky Perky Coffee. The idea of it started when I was, I would say five years old. My father is a huge coffee connoisseur and he would wine and dine his clients. He was an architect in the Philippines, but his clients were um, folks who were trying to build vacation homes in the Philippines, like the Duke of York or the Prince of Malaysia, you know? And so I, as a five-year-old would sit there and watch these two just love on love, you know, love this art of coffee. And I'd just be like, wow, this is amazing. Was not, I was not allowed to drink coffee until I was 18 years old. Um, but my father being from Spain was able to drink, or I was able to drink wine when I was 11. So there, (laughs) so with all that being, (laughs) yeah, yeah, crazy, right? (laughs) So, so with all that being said, um, I, I basically made the decision when I got older that coffee would be my hobby too. Then I had my third daughter (laughs) and (laughs) I love her. And she was also not necessarily expected at the time she was, she was supposed to be here. Or I thought in my mind, I was like, this is my timeline on how many children and when I'm going to have them. You know, the story is much bigger than me. So I um, found myself having, having just had her and she and her, her sister right before her only 17 months apart. And I literally felt like I put a pause, a great pause, actually, never put those two together, but I put a great pause on my career. And I really missed that aspect of me. Mm -hmm. And in that, I felt myself losing the battle against this ideology of mother, whatever that meant to me. And at that time, for me, that meant that I had to play small. That meant I was just a devoted mother to these children and that's all I could do. And my girlfriends who had known me building these incredible companies before having these younger two kids were like, what are you doing to yourself? My love, you know? And I was like, what, what are you talking about? And they're like, this is, this is not you. This right here is not you. So figure yourself out. And they basically had an intervention for me and they said, you need, we need to figure you out here. So part of that was for me was every morning waking up before my children were up as much as I could and sitting in front of, at, at, my, at my kitchen table in Austin, Texas, when we lived there and taking out a journal and a, having a really good cup of coffee and just journaling and meditating and doing a little bit of yoga movement practice, right? And as I started to do this daily, I found myself after a month of doing this, I was like, huh, there might be a different story here. Maybe I am not that person that I was playing into. After three months of doing this, I was like, oh my gosh, I can see possibility again. After four months, six months, you know, by when, when Sayla, the baby, turned a year old, I found myself selling that company, the, the virtual event management company, and then le- leaning into an opportunity to become, uh, to work with a, a business incubator that was, that was starting to pop up uh, in Austin, Texas. And I was like, that sounds fun. But I could never have gotten to that point of creating a new adventure had I not given myself those moments to just be still with myself. Mm-hmm. And in that, when I, so the incubator that I started to, to be a part of, it was called The Tribe. I was director of community and I was invited to um, bring investors, influencers, and e-commerce brands together into the same room to basically create more business faster. And in that, I mean, that was basically like Shark Tank every day, the show Shark Tank, right? It was like, that's what I was doing. It was so much fun. And, and with that being said, my clients challenged me one day. They're like, you are so good at cultivating us. Like, we love the fact that you've done this. And also, have you ever thought about creating your own e-commerce brand? Like you and the way in which you talk to women would be, it would be incredible. And I was like, I don't know what I would create. Like, uh, <laughs> I've never even thought about it. And in the thinking, I started to realize like, wow, this, if I was to do anything else outside of this work, which I loved, I would love to speak to women about showing up for themselves. And how can I do that through an e-commerce product? So the coffee for me was just like a, oh, duh. Well, that was where I started. Right. What if I help women start there? So that's, that's the short and long of it. And, um, and so I, I started doing all the research. I started to do, you know, just just realizing that this is, I mean, I knew that women drank coffee, 
but I got the research behind me and the, the business plan behind me and I launched. And in 2017, after growing the community before launching the actual product to the world, I sold a thousand bags that first month <laughs> and I was like, and all online. Right. So that was really cool. And so I was like, I think we might have something here. So that's where Perky <laughs> started. And, um, and it's just continued to grow since three years ago. It's been a lot of fun. I love that. And I mean, I'd love to just bring this to our listeners to really look at, you know, what are the areas that you know you need to pivot or shift or change and changing our identities in terms of what we think motherhood is and, you know, our livelihood and how do those things mix together. I mean, when you were speaking, I was thinking of an exact moment when my daughters were young. And I remember like, if I watch one more episode of Sesame Street, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> exactly. Like I needed to shift into something else that was more mm. of an expression of me that didn't take away from being a mother, but my version of what that looks like. And I think, you know, going back to the great pause where you allowed yourself to have that time through journaling, through having stillness to see what that next iteration is for you. I think that's so perfect for the time that we have now for women in particular to take that time to see, you know, what is speaking to your heart, what is shifting yeah. and to give, give some energy to that. So I so appreciate your, your journey and, and in sharing that um, with our listeners to have that. And I know yeah. that our listeners are, are going to want to stay, you know, in, in contact with you and how is it that they can connect with you? Absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, Definitely. I mean, if they're interested in trying out the coffee, um, the coffee is not just coffee. It's, it's literally about how do you transform every day? And I do little things for you. I'm not going to give you all the surprises. You have to check it out for yourself. <laughs> um, but perkyperky.com, it would be the way to do that. And if you sign up for our, uh, in, to our VIP um, club, um, which will pop up right when you get to the site, you get 20% off your first order. So I definitely encourage you to do that. Um, if you want to just connect with me, uh, Facebook is the best place. So if you go to Facebook and check out Marusha Murphy, feel free to, um, you know, send me a friend request and I'd love to get to know you better that way. Um, just let me know that we met through Diane. That would be awesome. And I don't accept all, all friend requests. So just message me and say, Hey, we met through Diane and we'll go with from there. That sounds wonderful. Perfect. Perfect. And any final thoughts for our audience? Um, I believe that this is an opportunity that we can take for our benefit if we allow ourselves to. Everything I believe is for us. It's not being done to us. And so if you're finding, if you're finding yourself right now in that place of victim, like feeling like lost in it and feeling like this is all happening to me, I want to invite you to take a breath right now, actually four or five breaths right now. <sighs> And the deeper you go into those breaths, it's a remembrance within ourselves that you too matter. You really truly matter. And in that mattering, that this adventure is just an opportunity and an invitation to open up into another level of yourself. You are a powerful being. And in that, you are going to create powerful things if you so choose to allow yourself to do so. Mm. Thank you so much, Marusha, for being here on the show and sharing your wisdom and talent. And we so appreciate that. And we also appreciate our guests for, for listening in and taking mm -hmm. your precious resource of your time to be here with us. We're here more important than ever to be building community and to connecting together. We would love for you to whatever platform you're listening to or watching this on to put any comments, any questions you have, anything that we can do to support you and make sure that you tag both Marusha and me. We would love to serve and help you in any way that we can. And uh, also, you know, there is in the show notes, there's not only Marusha's information, you can also grab my free gift at uh, resetyourpowergift.com. You know, there's lots of tools where you can really um, go deep in what's happening right now in the world and, and come out with uh, you empowering yourself. And we want that for you. So until we connect again, live your spotlight. Bye for now. Bye-bye.